Ripple Rush. This is a simple draw and draw game, a variant of the roll and draw, where you draw cards, receive a prompt, and then you draw on a sheet of paper and you score things at the end. Stronghold Games has been publishing a number of them, and this is a game in that family. Extremely simple. You can play with children, and that's a and that that is how I played it in these times of pandemic, in which I don't have game net anymore. I played it with my two daughters. Uh, sometimes just with one of them at a time and sometimes with both of them. So I played it with two and three players. Ripple Rush, That's let's see how it works. So you have a deck of cards uh, representing numbers in different suits as indicated by shape and color. As simple as that. These numbers go from 1 to 25. You shuffle the deck and then you remove a number of cards uh, depending on the number of players. So fewer players means leaner decks. If you play the advanced game, but really you can play as the regular game, you also draw two of these cards at the beginning of the game. You place them in an area where everybody sees them and that will pro those cards will provide extra ways of scoring points at the end of the game. Next you give each player a sheet of paper such as this one. They are double-sided. You have a good stack so they should last for a while. Very simple gameplay. Uh, each turn and gameplay simultaneous, all players play at the same time. Each turn each player receives a card. Suppose this is this one and another player received that one. Now what you do is you write it. You write it down. You write that number anywhere in the column of that color or shape. Anywhere, well, if it's the first number in that color. Suppose I have a 5 and I decide to write a 5 there. Simple as that. And my opponent is writing their things there. 1 and the triangle, then I put it here. 1 and 25 are usually very simple to place. If the bottom or top number in that column is still there. 18, I want to place it there. So pretty simple, right? Now, the trick is this, that when your things are getting crowded, when you have multiple numbers, you need to write the numbers in ascending order. So the six has to be above the one, which is easy, but below the 11. And by playing it, by placing it in either way, in either position, I am committing. Because of course, now that means that I won't be able to place numbers between seven and 10 there, but I'll be able to place numbers between 2 and 5. If I place it here, then 2, two, two to 4 are gone, and that's how I did it. What happens if you indeed cannot place a number? Then everybody else gets a chance to place it. So suppose that they draw a card that they cannot place, I'm lucky and that hasn't happened yet, and well, I almost got there. Suppose that I was not able to place the 12. Suppose that I was not able to place my number, then I announce it, say, okay, I cannot place it, it is an hexagon 12. And the same do the other players. When a player cannot un, cannot place their number, they announce it, and anybody else gets a chance to place in it. And so you'll have rounds later in the game where no one can place their own numbers, but you get people playing placing each other's number, which is kind of kind of fun. So far so good, and you're thinking, well, why don't I just mathematically place things exactly where they should go? I'm sure that you could math that one, do a statistical thing also. But then it becomes trickier because you see the cards that the opponent, of course, are placing, and then you will know that certain numbers are not nearly as likely. However, another reason to manipulate things a little bit and maybe put one a little higher, a little lower than where it should go statistically, is to complete a row entirely. Because when you do so, like I've done here, you immediately get that bonus. If your bonus is one of these hexes inside a shape, then you get to place a number, any number that you want, as long as it's legal, within, within that column. And suppose then I'm gonna do 25. Which seems a no-brainer, but what then I get a 25 red, I'm gonna feel a little silly. But that's the bonus that you get. You get to write a number 
in an empty space of that column as long as it's legal. If your bonus is a number, because you completed a row, if your bonus is a number, then you get to place that number anywhere in any column as long as it is legal and suppose I do that because booyah I get this other bonus here which is a number in this column here and I decide to put a one here this is how it works you play until the deck is depleted don't be worried it looks so thick but remember smaller um, smaller decks will be used for fewer players which also means you don't know exactly which cards are there so again preventing the absolute mathing of the game when the deck is over the game is over each player scores a number of points for each column equal to the longest sequence of adjacent spaces that they have been able to fill out so for the red column to me there will be three points Two points here, five points here, did not bad. Two points here. I add all of those points together. Plus these cards here that we drew randomly from a deck of similar cards give us extra points, three points each, if we completed the column indicated there. And again, that to me uh, adds interest because it gives you more of a pusher luck uh, element as you want to complete certain rows because they're valuable, even though maybe placing a number there uh, will not look particularly smart from a strictly dry statistical point of view. This is how you play Ripple Rush. So Ripple Rush is very simple, but not trivial, not mindless. It probably is a little too light for most game nights uh, uh, with hardcore gamers, even as a filler, just a little too thin, I believe. But it works for me, especially in these times of pandemic where I don't have game night, I'm playing mainly with my kids, they're eight and nine, and this game works very well. Actually, they like it very much. And they like it actually for the same reason why, as a very, 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 very light filler, I like it also. Because on one hand, uh, uh, the best, uh, the next best move is very obvious. Just put as much distance as possible between these two numbers because they're really far from one another. On the other hand, the game gives incentive to make moves that are not ideal, to risk putting numbers too close to each other, too high, too low, to get a certain bonus or to complete one of the objectives on those two cards that in the game are described as the advanced game, but really, I don't think they add all that much complexity just consider them as part of the standard game because I really believe that they add just a little bit of spice, just a little bit of flavor that the game really needs. Play with children is perfectly fine. They like it, it's intuitive, uh, they know how to put numbers in a row, how to sequence them and they see again the fun of risking and putting them close to each other so you can complete a nice line, although you may be blocking uh, things up and giving a lot of numbers to other players and that is also a simple idea but it works there's a certain fun in getting numbers from other people although that may mean that then you clog one of your columns and you start giving out numbers like like yeah, like his candies at Halloween uh, not in times of pandemic maybe we will I don't know but I digress the point is that it's a very simple very very simple very straightforward very light game but not mindless. It has a couple of interesting ideas here and there that make it a very nice filler for families, especially to play with children, to play with your spouse, in case your spouse is a very casual gamer. Probably not enough meat here for game night, but many of us are not having game night, so Ripple Rush may just be the game that we need right now in this strange time of pandemic in, in 2020. So, fun. Simple, very simple, but enjoyable.